currently this morning we have Vishnu Varathana, the Head of Economics and Strategy at Mizuho Bank, talking with Brian Fernandez of BizTech Asia on some of the movements and insights re regarding regional market performance, uh, as well as some of the risks that can be discussed uh, pertaining to the Russia defaulting on its foreign currency sovereign debt for the first time in more than 100 years. Also, there's a view on the risk that uh, markets see right now with key events, pointing to the rest of the data outlook out there. So this is Brian Fernandez talking to Mizuho Bank. Now, Vishnu, what's your view on market performance this morning? Uh, market performance this morning is similar to having, uh, uh, you know, uh, having a, a, a panda in the zoo. What happens is the elephants get overlooked and the bears get overruled, the regular bears get overruled, and markets are looking past, uh, you know, Fed tightening risks uh, and all that discussion about recession. I mean, of course, in the nuance of it, uh, there are many other things they're looking at, like Fed commands, uh, G7 commands, and, and, there are, and, and, and I think at the margin, uh, markets are getting a little bit more hopeful of, of uh, you know, treading that, that narrow path and arriving at a soft landing or at least that's what the price action tells us for now. But the important thing to remember is not to get carried away because this is the, we're coming into the quarter end. So there would be a lot of rebalancing that distorts uh, the underlying picture on risk. Now, we, we can't get past today without talking about Russia's debt default. Tell us about it and its impact on debt markets across the world. But I, I think that's, that's uh, you know, we, we initially markets were thinking this would happen a lot sooner. Uh, but of course, uh, you know, Russia was uh, Russia surprised markets by meeting obligations, so on and so forth. Uh, they managed to, to you know, string together some money to, to pay off. Uh, now, I think markets will have to relook at where the ruble is headed, where uh, credit uh, the the uh, credit uh, metrics would look like for a lot of the larger Russian firms uh, that may initially have been able to to tap uh, some parts. Uh, not not the entire global uh, capital market, but some parts of the capital markets. And it also brings into view the fact that, and, and this is the elephant in the room, which is that uh, Russia's energy sales continue to be the main source of liquidity, cash flows, and funding for them. Uh, and, and so what it does as we go down the road is it increases scrutiny on how quickly, uh, you know, the, the West is able to di uh, divert uh, uh, or, or rather to, to turn away from Russia as a source of energy and, and funding in an indirect sense. And, and this is the messaging out of G7, isn't it? It's, it's the closing of ranks and tightening the screws on Russia. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's and, and this is a tricky part. During a, you know, a summit like that, it's quite, um, it's, it's always, uh, it looks good to, to close ranks, but I think when the reality of, uh, you know, disruptions to energy, high energy prices, and particularly, uh, the the political social aspects of uh, very rapidly rising inflation starts hitting home. Uh, then that becomes it becomes trickier to hold on to these uh, ideological positions, and, and we've seen that happening in Europe for a while now. Uh, and and that I think that that's where the question lies: how much will it be resolved? Whether they can all end up on the same page uh, on what actions need to be taken or not. Now, Vishnu, what are some key uh, other elements you've highlighted in your market commentary today that we should be aware of? Well, I, I think you know the, the one of the main things for us is that uh, in a, in a in a sense this is a fairly quiet week uh, with policymakers not out there uh, drumming major uh, you know messages out, uh, or at least when I say policymakers, forgive me, I, I actually meant the Fed policymakers having had, uh, said their piece. The ECB will be out there at, at, at their forum on, on, uh, at Sintra. That would be worth watching because markets are still waiting for uh, the real details uh, on their anti-fragmentation tool, uh, as well as how far they want to go with rate hikes. Because here's the thing, whilst ECB has flagged a 25 basis point hike in July, the bets are really getting very sexy at the September end because ECB would like to suggest something closer to 25 unless data warrant a bigger move. Markets are pricing in upwards of 75 basis points if they have a chance uh, and there's a real divergence there. That will also give us or inform us on how well the euro may hold up because the anti-fragmentation tool uh, and rate hikes both ought to hold up the euro. If there's a dis there's disappointment on either front, uh, that could unravel, which means uh, the, the dollar that has been somewhat subdued can make a very, very quick comeback uh, and that can have a wider impact uh, across the currency markets in the region, which means some of the stability seen in the region, the ASEAN currencies, 
uh, that could also start to become wobbly uh, if, if some of these things come to pass. Uh, bigger picture as we go down a few weeks is very likely inflation signals are going to be uh, on the hotter side with more policy tightening than, than you were. Uh, and that means that uh, markets may not quite be done uh, with some of the sell-off. Uh, and, and so, you know, to, to overuse the term, uh, whether the bouncing cat is, uh, has a pulse or not becomes an important question.